Dear God, this day, August 6, 1962, will be a day to remember for the history books. Today, our little island Jamaica will be gaining independence from our mother country, Britain. I am writing you for guidance and courage for our people as we get in the frame of mind for peace, love, and continuous prosperity for our little island on this day and forevermore. Lord, I am begging you to keep our leaders on the path of positive mindset for the betterment of our country. Let my little island be blessed with many history makers of this year and in our future generations of youth. Lord, let me be among those of history makers and positive thinkers to better serve for my country. Lord, as I pray for myself to be a better daughter and human being amongst my neighbors, let me not be selfish and pray for myself, but pray that my mother gain all the money she needs to fix up our little old house. Lord, you know how hard she is working to make us children live a better life from earth. Thank you, Lord, for listening and for keeping all my family and relatives alive to see this day of independence for our nation. Your child, Rose and Hart.
Jamaica was the happiest island in all the Caribbean. Kingston was in holiday mood, and the whole population hung out the flags and metaphorically threw its hat in the air. They rejoiced, not that they were parting from Britain, they are firm adherents of the crown, but because Jamaica stood on the threshold of independence. And then it rained. A tropical downpour as inappropriate as our own deluge on bank holiday. But nature relented, and as though to bid welcome, out came the sun as the airliner touched down at Palisados Airport, bringing to represent the Queen Princess Margaret. Independence was to have a royal greeting. There to welcome the Princess and her husband was the Governor, Sir Kenneth Blackburn, and the veteran Prime Minister, Sir Alexander Bustamante. After the greeting of Lady Blackburn, it was the turn of the Premier to bid Her Royal Highness a loyal welcome. Then Princess Margaret was conducted to the saluting base to receive the royal salute by the Jamaica Regiment. Yes, open the great national stadium, which nobly expresses the pride and... Sir Alexander Bustamante received the Princess and Lord Snowden and conducted them to the royal box. This was the place where, at midnight on the following day, the flag of independent Jamaica would be raised. Princess Margaret said it was fitting that the country would serve as host for the ninth Central American and Caribbean Games. And after the applause came the emotional rendering of the Jamaican National Anthem. Of the Jamaican National Anthem. The stage was now taken by the young people. Jamaica's youth organizations had heard the princess say that the country's future rested with their generation, which uh, would be in good hands. One spectator who had been among the prime movers in achieving independence was the opposition leader, Norman Manley. Two minutes to midnight, Sunday, August the 5th, the birth of Jamaican independence. The new flag was about to be hoisted over the stadium. Sir Kenneth Blackburn was soon to be Governor General, the higher rank in accord with the new status of Jamaica as full member of the Commonwealth. It is likely that before long he will be succeeded by a Jamaican and who better than the 78-year-old Sir Alexander Bustamante? It was another historic day for the emergent nation that saw the state opening of Parliament. The motto chosen for the new coat of arms is, out of many, one people. 
And here on the Westminster model, will sit the Democratic Assembly, who will govern the multiracial million and three quarters, who will become one people. On this moving occasion, it was Princess Margaret's privilege to represent Her Majesty the Queen. And as always, when such duty falls to her, she now performed it with a grace and dignity befitting the responsibility. In their places for the...